Just as I'd hoped, you lot came up with all sorts of suggestions on my chicken tractor design. Thank you very much. I read all the suggestions very carefully and here's an update on how far the design has progressed. The biggest challenge I met was clearance over the ground. As you know, the plan is that this contraption can be moved easily, just like a wheelbarrow, to fresh grass every day. But right now it just doesn't lift high enough off the ground. Now I moved the wheel forward and it did help, but I'm sure the bottom of the run would still snag on grass. I hacked away at the front panel to give more room for the wheel, but that still wouldn't be enough. And having two wheels wouldn't help much either because they would be more awkward over slopey or bumpy ground. So I had to rethink about it all and I came up with this, a hinged wheel bracket. Of course, this is still a prototype and the final bracket will have to be made of galvanized steel. I made the bracket this shape so that the weight will always be off center which means the wheel should always go back into position again after use and not get stuck. Now, of course, this makes the whole design more complicated and therefore more expensive, but if it works, then I'll have something that functions. Because if it isn't easy to use, then nobody's going to be interested in buying one. As you know, hens like eating grass, so any ground they're on quickly becomes bare. So moving them on regularly is vital for their happiness and for the state of your lawn, which is what this whole project is about. But the first time I tried the wheel arrangement, it didn't work. <laughs> there was just too much oomph needed altogether. But it's a question of leverage. And when I rearranged the string, it worked fine. It lifts the whole thing up high enough to be properly mobile without having to tip the cage up too much. It also moves the weight further forward. So the person doesn't have to carry much at all on the handles. I needed a lever at the other end, of course. And a little pulley wheel. I'm not sure about this paracord, if there's anything better. I think wire would wear away quicker, actually. But, um, Maybe somebody knows. Let me know. Thank you. And that brings us to the handles. As you know, the grip on any handle is surprisingly important for comfort and for ease of use. And I considered using metal pipe, but um, here I am trying spruce timber instead. In theory, I could turn a handle shape on them on the lathe but I'm trying this way instead, using a template and my spindle molder.
The disc on top bears on the template but doesn't cut into it. So this one is not spinning as freely as I'd like it to. Nonetheless, it's very effective. Just a little scary. <laughs> My first grip shape was too narrow, so I made another and now it's actually comfortable. All the woodwork will need sanding and painting, of course. Quite a few of you didn't like the MDF that I made the prototype from. I had thought, anyway, about using timber boards instead, but that would add a lot to the cost, so I'm still not sure. This is exterior MDF, and I've used it successfully outside for years, but you're right, it doesn't like sitting on the ground. I'm wondering how to replace the bottom edge here with something more durable. Hmm, not sure about that yet. And here's the ladder. Might rethink this design, but even this would work fine, I think. And this covered compartment, the little house, doubles up as a space to roost at night and for the nest box. And the curtain creates a hiding place for the nest. Super simple, which is always the best way if you can. The perch drops into little brackets and can be removed easily for cleaning. The final version will have more rounded corners for comfort. I haven't fully worked out the ventilation for this space, but um, don't forget it doesn't get as hot here in Ireland as it might do where you live. I still have to work out how to make the doorway in the mesh. I can't have the whole end flopping down because it, it's integral to the rigidity of the whole thing. And of course there are handles sticking out of it too now. So the doorway will need to be in the side somehow. Hmm. Someone suggested the whole thing is just too small for hens, but of course you could always leave the door open in the daytime if you like and give them some sort of larger run if that's safe for them. I'm not trying to um, imprison them, it's more to keep them safe from predators. I was interested to hear that rats and other small animals are a problem for some of you. Some people commented that this mesh is just too big. Uh, it's true, I was aiming it at foxes and dogs mostly, but I did think about what you said. And it's just that I can't quite see why rats and mice would be a problem. We have plenty of those, but they don't seem to do any harm. Um, our hens eat up their dinner quickly and don't leave any scraps. So I'm not sure why the rats would bother visiting them. Or what am I missing? Tell me. Of course, we don't have weasels here in Ireland, but we do have mink and stoats, which would certainly eat hens. But they are rare, especially in suburban gardens. So uh, again, I'm not sure if it's worth covering all this with tiny mesh, but it's still possible. I'll keep thinking. By far the biggest threat here are the foxes, and this should be completely safe from them, even if they wanted to dig their way in. Now I'm waiting for hinges and special pliers and clips to hold the mesh together, and only then will I know how strong the final structure will be but it's coming along, I think. It takes a while to develop some new product. My guitar machine took 11 years, so bear with me, but I hope to bring you, um, maybe a finished version soon. <laughs>